Welcome to the elegant Odessa, Ukraine. Lying on the shores of the Black Sea, Odessa is a popular resort city, yet much more than that. Once home to the largest population of Jews in Ukraine and formerly the fourth largest city in Imperial Russia, Odessa is full of Art Nouveau and classicist architecture as well as being the home to ballet and opera. Over the next few videos, we'll be seeing what Odessa has to offer. We'll be visiting food and Christmas markets, the iconic Potemkin Stairs, the site of one of the most marvelled at moments in cinema history, and even an ex-Soviet cable car adorned with cinema legends such as Charlie Chaplin. And that's just for starters. This is going to be classic. Morning all and welcome back to Odessa in Ukraine for another video from Odessa in Ukraine. I'm going to be here for the next few videos, okay, because I'm currently waiting for my second vaccine in order to be able to travel again. Brilliant, that's tomorrow. And you might be wondering why have I chosen to film this video on a day which is not sunny? Why am I out on a cold Tuesday morning in the wind and the rain? Will you shut up? Right, the car is gone now. Yeah, there's a simple answer to that. It's December in Eastern Europe. There is no sun. I haven't seen the sun in about three weeks. So this is what we've got to work with, but we have got this to work with as well. This is Empress Catherine the Great. She founded Odessa in 1794. Odessa is also known as the Pearl of the Black Sea among other names. Although today I'm pretty much calling it a manky bit of seaweed on a beach in England. So with that in mind, let's explore. Now, despite the weather, as you can see, there's lots of nice architecture in Odessa. Look at that. I can imagine in the summer, it's gorgeous. There's the Empress Catherine the Great statue up there. There's the Hotel de Paris. That was meant to be a French accent, but whatever. And if you know Odessa, you probably know where I'm gonna be heading first. Here's the first sighting of a larder. Of course, if you've seen my Serbia videos, you know I was obsessed with Yugos and Zastav as well in Ukraine. We have larders, very similar looking. Classic cars from that era. Did you know, my dad used to be a car mechanic and um, I'm sure he used to tell me stories about larders or jokes to be more accurate about around the fact that they basically just fell apart as you start driving them. Um, a bit like Zastavas. Um, we're doing a lot of up and down in this video. I don't mean having sex, I mean going up and down things. That's what I mean. <laughs> The first one's over here, it's not open yet. Uh, I've got about 40 minutes to wait. So first we'll check out the, probably the most well-known tourist attraction in Odessa. I'm located on Primorsky Boulevard, which is this street here. I see a lot of people like riding down here on bikes and stuff. Again, summer, I'm sure it's wonderful. Maybe not now, but this is what I'm talking about. It might not seem like much to begin with, but trust me, the history behind it is epic. Now, for any film buffs, this is an epic moment because I'm walking down the Potemkin steps or stairs, whatever you want to call it. Basically 192 steps going down to the Black Sea down there. And at the bottom, supposedly, the steps are wider so that when you're standing at the bottom, it looks longer, like a perspective thing. We'll see when we go down the bottom. Basically, there was a movie, Battleship Potemkin, which is said to be one of the most epic examples of cinema history and I haven't seen it. I've seen clips of it from researching this video and honestly I wasn't aware of it whatsoever. And it was a silent movie um, back in the early 1900s. It kind of depicted an event which supposedly happened here. It's based on true stories. It didn't actually happen on these steps. I think that was used for dramatic license or dramatic effect. You know, what actually happened was a little far away, I think. But basically the battleship Potemkin came into port down there and there was a mutiny. The sailors staged a mut mutiny on board. It was in 1905, I think, it was around the time of the first Russian Revolution, which again is something I'm learning about now that I'm here. 
I'm not the expert on that. Bolsheviks, the um, you know the demise of Russia as it was and the formation of the Soviet Union, Lenin, etc. It's all very interesting. And basically, the people of Odessa came to the top of the steps up there to kind of welcome the people, the sailors that were staging the mutiny. And it kind of all went wrong. Basically, gunmen arrived behind them and sort of forced them down the steps and shot them all. There's a bit in that movie where there's a woman, uh, like a mother, and she gets shot and she's with her pram, like at the top, and the as she falls, the pram falls down the steps and she knocks it, basically, and, you know, is responsible for her child's death, effectively. And the way it kind of careens down the stairwell past, you know, scenes of misery and death is quite grim. But, um, you know, I think the fact that it was silent kind of adds to the effect. It allows you to kind of imagine the horror that was happening. These steps do go on for a while. I have been here before, like a few days ago, and I did walk up. It is quite exhausting. As a result, there is something next to it, which is the funicular. That's what we're gonna be going on when it opens. Okay. 191, 192, here we are. I'm at the bottom of the Potemkin steps. There are two pianos underneath this archway. I think that key needs some oil or something. <laughs> I'm down by the port. Obviously Odessa being right on the Black Sea is a key spot for trade you've got all this shipping equipment and everything and um railway over there but we're going to the left over here weird thing number one is this weird monstrosity this gargantuan baby coming out of an egg or something apparently it's uh, said to depict the rebirth of odessa after the war I'm walking down this pier opposite the Potemkin steps. There's the Viking Sinius there. I guess some sort of cruise ship. Oh, look at all these other boats and ships and tankers in the distance. Um, but what we're here to see is this Hotel Odessa. You might think, oh, it's just a hotel. Yeah, this hotel. Oh, there's a bird. Don't shit on me. Despite looking relatively modern, at least by sort of 20 years ago standards, supposedly it is abandoned. Um, I think it was because basically the construction of it was terrible and um, it wasn't allowed to open in terms of like health and safety or something or that, you know, the um, there wasn't investment. It looks like some sort of um, casino from Las Vegas, you know, one of those dated ones from like the 90s or something. But yeah, it's weird because on Google Maps, if you look this up, there are all these reviews like, oh, amazing hotel, wonderful room. And then there's these other comments saying, what are you on about? It never opened. Yeah, so supposedly it never opened at all, but there are all these weird fake reviews on Google Maps. Never trust anything you see on Google. I wish you could see what I could see. It's um, just an empty, cavernous place with like um, concrete stairwells that have got nothing on them. And yeah, it's just completely abandoned. So clearly those Google reviews are not accurate. Right, I'm back down again. Um, we'll just have a fag and then get on this funicular if it's open. Oh, it is open, brilliant. Oh, that one, okay. Can I see that? Oh, it's the catacombs, yeah? Catacombs. Ah. Cool. Oh, and is that uh, Bill Holodnistrovsky? Yeah, okay, I'm back on Primorsky Boulevard with some roadworks behind me. Um, nice architecture down here as well. Um, yeah, that funicular, I'm not going to lie. There's nothing I can do to make it wacky, crazy, bonkers, exciting. Um, it's just a funicular. 
nothing explodes on the way up or you know there isn't like flashing lights or something over here ahead of me is the city hall which i got some drone shots of a few days ago when it wasn't pouring with rain um it's got a big ukrainian flag at the top and there was music playing from the side of it the other day i'm not sure what that's about but it's got these big columns out the front with these statues as well in these little sort of alcove things outside this building there's a big cannon obviously as you'd expect, somewhere like Odessa has seen a lot of conflict. It used to be part of the Ottoman Empire during World War II. It was occupied by Romania, one of the Axis powers, and was made the capital of Transnistria, which is now that weird strip of land in what is now Moldova over the border, which is both a country and not a country. You know, it's like a disputed area, uh, which actually has its own passport and flag. So here we are at the Ballet and Opera Theatre. It's iconic, look at it. Um, it reminds me of the Bolshoi Theatre I went to in Minsk in Belarus last year. It looks very similar. It was designed by Felner and Helmer, that was a mouthful, in the late 1800s. And supposedly they also built other masterpieces like this across Central and Eastern Europe. But this is kind of their PSD de resistance. What is it with the French today? Um, yeah, it's awesome. You can see obviously things like Swan Lake, classic. I love Swan Lake, love listening to the music. It's the kind of music I listen to, you know, when you're depressed or something or you're extremely angry, it really calms me down. So, um, you know, that would be great to go to if I had like a suit or something, but I don't. <laughs> we might check that out in another video, who knows. But right now I need to get home because I've got two English lessons, um, but I'll be back out after that to do something else. Hopefully the weather will improve. See you in a bit. Oh, it's okay. Okay, fast forward a couple of hours, and after a wardrobe change, I'm back at it. I'm heading down towards an area called Prevorce, which I understand is like the rough, dodgy area of Odessa, but that remains to be seen. It's where I'm planning to be in the next video. Um, we're heading towards a potentially top tier destination, but look at this church behind me. I walked past this the other day, coming back from my vaccine a few weeks ago. It's green, it looks much nicer in the sunlight. I'll put a little shot over there of what, you know, Odessa might look like when the sun's out. God forbid. Uh, but yeah, it's awesome. That gl uh, gold dome on the top, very common with Orthodox churches in Ukraine, Moldova, Russia, Belarus, you name it. Lots of lovely religious buildings in Odessa. Look at the bulbous domes on this church humongous and they've got yeah the gold and the black there was one in Estonia oh what was it called I can't remember there was um, an example of a, a church with a black dome on the top this area does feel a little bit more dodgy especially some of the clientele in the area you know asking for money that sort of thing I can't really see what I'm looking at because of the rain on my glasses but there's a building <laughs> I must be near an army museum of some kind. This is so cool. You've got guns, you've got tanks, missiles, launchers. Jesus. Here we go. I have been reliably informed that I have to go through this archway in order to get where I'm going. Someone told me it was French or has some connection with France. Um, that's probably bollocks. Pardon my language, but I am f***ing raging because the thing that was meant to be the top tier part of this video, i.e. a 1971 ex-Soviet cable car, is f***ing closed. <sighs> Remain calm, David. The thing that was meant to be interesting about it was the fact that it's not like a, you know, a modern gondola telephetical thing, you know, with a crystal glass bottom floor. It's almost like a dilapidated funfair ride from 1987 or earlier. Like I said, the 70s it was, it was built. And I understand that it doesn't stop, so it keeps moving. So when you get on, you have to kind of open it and get into it um, without dying. But they all go down to the beach, I assume. Hello. But on the plus side, we found a ginger fluffy angel. Hello. Meow. Um, the thing that's interesting about these that I find, I mentioned about silent movies earlier. There's a weird connection here because 
each of these cable cars has like a different design on them. I just walked into a tree. Um, like there's one with Charlie Chaplin, i.e. silent movies, Pink Panther. There's one with Albert Einstein on, all sorts of different designs. So let's see what we can get with the drone. Wish me luck. But it is bizarre. I might even have to put in the title of this video, Abandoned Cable Car. Um, I think it's not abandoned. I think more than likely it's just a case that it's a seasonal thing. This cable car very much reminds me of what I saw in Pripyat four years ago. I was in Pripyat and Chernobyl, the ghost city by Chernobyl, with, of course, the Ferris wheel and the Dodgems, very famous, that were never used as a result of the nuclear power plant disaster in 1986. It's kind of that same kind of feel of these sort of antiquated, derelict kind of things that you get on and risk your life on. Down by the beach in Odessa in December, kind of feels like a zombie movie. Like there's two guys there, there's a cat, and <laughs> this completely deserted promenade along the beach. Hello. Hello. Okay, no. I mean, it's not that cold. It's like 12 degrees Celsius. So, um, yeah, it's not like it's icy middle of winter sort of thing, even though it is December. Oh Lord. And here we are, my first time ever in the Black Sea. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. I can say I've been in the Black Sea. I'm not going in. I haven't got my swimming trunks. I feel like a kid in England, like when I was growing up and we'd go down the beach down by my nan's place or something. And it, you know, it would be like this grim, gray, wet, cold and miserable yet somehow we would have fun on a beach and that's what it's all about it doesn't have to be this never-ending myth of perpetual sunlight that's a wonderful phrase that is so much portrayed on YouTube it gives this you know completely unrealistic view of the world in that everywhere you go every day of the year is sunny and perfect and you can walk around in your bikini I'm not in my bikini um, you know and, and very much this this desolate kind of wasteland feeling of this beach I know that it's winter and obviously that's the reason, but when you think of things like Corona, this is kind of the, uh, how the world is now, this dystopian world where even beaches are empty and completely barren. I'm coming up with wonderful vocabulary today. <laughs> I'm heading back through the woods, up the steps, past the possibly abandoned, possibly seasonal 1971 ex-Soviet cable car in the background. There's that cat again. It's still in the same position. Hello. Um, yeah, today um, I'm glad I filmed this video because in the end I've had an amazing time. I must admit I was slightly reluctant to start filming videos in Odessa, mainly because of the weather, but I've gone out today and just bloody done it. Regardless, I've gone through a multitude of emotions, general frustration in the beginning, inappropriate humour, absolute fury, and concluded this video with a wonderful, serene and sombre feeling of desolation and abandonment. That was good as well. So, um, yeah, as I said at the beginning, this isn't the only video from Odessa, so if you have been here or you're from here or expecting to see certain things, don't worry. The next few videos will hopefully quench your thirst if you have any thirst for Odessa. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and all that. Leave a comment, it really helps, especially considering the algorithm probably hates me now that I've left Serbia and I'm in a new country. That would be much appreciated. Jesus, why did I do that walking up the stairs? Ah, lovely. Catch you later.